Hi, uh, this is Aishwarya Padmanabha. Um, I'm currently doing my Master's of Science in Computer Science at Northeastern University in uh, Seattle. And um, I don't know what else to say. So can you give me some context here? Like oh, what, okay. what do you, All right. what exactly so, you want to know? How did you get into uni University of Northern Eastern? Like how did I get into it Northeastern? Okay, yeah. so I'll start off with how I even found out about the university. It's knit. Um, so my senior at my undergrad institute in uh, India, SJB Institute of Technology, she was studying at Northeastern University in Boston. And I was constantly pinging my senior, like, um, and staying in touch with her, like, I'm applying to my, I'm applying for my master's and um, I am interested in these subjects and I don't know how to go about it. So can you help me finalize my universities? And she told me her list of universities and I compiled it with a bunch of all of my other seniors and came up with my list. Northeastern has um, an amazing and a very comprehensive Masters of Science and Computer Science program. And that's what I was aiming at. It also has the, an amazing balance of the electives that we can choose from, which uh, many universities did, do not offer. Um, and so that's what I liked about Northeastern. And they also have this amazing co-op program where uh, you can go to companies and do your co-op, which is a little larger than an internship. And uh, so you can work for eight months with a company, which is much better than just three or four months because you get that practical um, experience with the company and you actually uh, feel the experience for more than just three months. And um, uh, you get to be a part of the company and uh, for a longer run and see better how decisions are being made and try to learn from it a lot more than you would do in an internship. So that co-op program was also very, very uh, unique to Northeastern University. And um, so these were what led me to even up in university in the first place. And then I went ahead and I got the um, admit. So then I went ahead and chose Seattle as my location, purely because of the big ends around over here, Google, mm -hmm. Microsoft, Facebook, and um, uh, Amazon. And uh, so, and that's about it. That's how I ended up in Northeastern Seattle. Also, I must say their um, research is also pretty good and their mm -hmm. faculty is also like really good. Um, in all of their satellite campuses as well, not just the Boston campus, they give uh, a good, um, good importance to all of their campuses. So that's something good. Yeah. So like <clears throat> this university is like in top ten universities in US. So like I don't think it's it that easy to get into. And like students believe if you are not in IIT, so it would be hard to get into like Stanford, Harvard, MIT, or Northern Eastern. So how did you get into, like, what did you, what stuff did you do in your undergraduate school in India, in Bangalore, that they accepted you? Um, I feel like with any university, um, especially the top 10 universities, it's very important to apply soon it, during your application processes for your master's itself. So step number one is to finalize your universities by at max, like, August of the year for training at fall. And by September, you should start rolling out your applications. And uh, that being said, you need to be very sure about your application. I uh, wrote a wrote one version of my SOP first, uh, a year before I left, or a year before I even decided that I want to do my master's. I was just like, okay, let me keep it ready, keep it handy in case I need to apply. And uh, then I had that revised by many, many people, all my seniors and uh, a couple of uh, other uh, people who are in the industry. And I'm like, what is your input and what is your input? So I kept all of their perspectives in mind. And then uh, it was basically, I feel my SOP, which is the statement of purpose. And um, then I feel like I got like a really good uh, letter of recommendations as well from my uh, from my very amazing professors from my my previous undergrad university. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a combination of all of this is what uh, helped strengthen my application, as well as my undergrad projects as well, like my side projects and um, mm -hmm. my work with Five Ladies Bengaluru and like everything just added up and mm -hmm. uh, all the work that I've done for the community and all that the community has given back to me, everything just added up and made a good application. Yeah. 
So tell us more about your projects. Like what did you do in undergraduate, and like what were your grades like? Uh, what I did in my undergraduate is uh, something that's uh, worth highlighting. I feel is uh, we did this project on uh, lidar data, which is light detection and ranging. So that's lidar, mm -hmm. and uh, that technology is what's used now in autonomous cars. And we were, uh, I was interested in machine learning at that point and artificial intelligence. And so this was a machine learning based project. So we had to build a neural network to estimate the pose, the current pose of an autonomous vehicle. And this was then being used by the company that we were um, doing the project for. And uh, they used that neural network to um, help uh, estimate the next position that the autonomous vehicle should go to. This was very crucial because you really want like um, very, very fast results. Otherwise, the vehicle will go haywire in wrong directions and you don't want that. You want like really good accuracy and you need it like by the second or by the millisecond. And um, so this is what my project was. And uh, it was very, very new um, and very unique. And we had an amazing mentor for the project. And uh, Apart from that, um, just a bunch of other side hustles, like some websites and uh, uh, some other machine learning projects as well. But I feel this was this was the one that I was writing about a lot in my statement of purpose because this was what was uh, most worthwhile at that point. Yeah, I think this really made you stand out, right? Yeah, I mean, you need to, everyone has something or the other that uh, they can use to stand out with. And mm. because if you're really interested in the subject to do a master's in it, mm. then you would have gone out and beyond in some aspect while, um, while you know, while having that passion for that subject. So you just really need to figure out what that is and uh, make sure you write about it because mm -hmm. um, this is the place to showcase that talent and that passion and everything. And this is like, it's a go or no go, right? You either get in or you don't. And you don't want to not get in. You want to get in. So this is the place to showcase that passion of yours so that the other and be like, yep, this person needs to come to my university. So do you think your suggestion would be that students who are not in IITs, right? That students who are in IITs, I think they can figure out themselves. Like they have a lot of people to help them out. That work on a project that can make you stand out, right? Grades, everyone who applies to Northern Eastern or like these universities have good grades. Like your projects are going to make you stand out, right? Sorry, good grades are going to make you stand out. Is that the question? No, no. I mean, everyone who applies to these universities have good uh -huh. grades. Like the projects. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like grades don't really matter over here as much as they do back in India. And uh, I'm not sure why. Because we come here with a mindset, at least, that uh, grades are everything. They do expect you to have a minimum uh, grade, but beyond that, they see everyone as the same person. And uh, then they judge you based on every other aspect of your profile. So um, it is true that if you have done research, then go ahead, publish it, and then that's going to add weightage to your uh, application. And uh, if you have done, like, if you need a company or something, so go ahead, add that. And it is very important to um, showcase uh, like all the important things that you've done. And also, it is important to um, keep in mind that you, um, you also just don't want to uh, go through your whole undergrad without doing anything except studying, right? Like, studying gets you to one place, but then you also need some kind of practical knowledge, which we don't get for whatever reasons in our engineering colleges, at least till when I was studying. Mm -hmm. So the, I feel like those side projects are also very, very important to showcase mm -hmm. that you really do know the subject and can uh, apply it in the real so world. Like, yeah. Students usually in India don't work on projects. So like who inspired you to do that project? And like, um, I guess it was just that I was very frustrated that I'm not able to learn anything practically in uh, mm -hmm. my college. And um, now that I'm blaming it, I'm just like, that's how our system works. And uh, so we're, we're 
to the theory of everything than how to apply that theory so mm-hmm. that really bogged me down at a point i'm mm-hmm. like why am i even learning all this if i'm not being able to apply anything so that's when i started looking reading up a little more and i started applying it a little more i'm like okay let me try doing this let me try doing that mm-hmm. so it was just all a matter of curiosity and mm-hmm. trying to think like where can i apply what i'm learning it was also a matter of meeting more people and uh, drawing inspiration from them. them like maybe like every weekend i met a couple of people who were like oh i i did this project today and then i got this result and i really don't know why that's happening and then you'll be like oh so this kind of a project exists so, mm-hmm. or oh this is how you approach that problem so i feel like um, i got lucky with the kind of people that i met as well how did how, how did you meet these kind of people in bangalore especially undergraduate student right everybody would be like okay have, we will help in this our college and like they would study one before one week before exams yeah th- that's a very good question actually so it's very important to go outside the college and meet people or outside that student uh, zone and meet people who are actually mm-hmm. in the industry as well you gain some perspective about how the industry works and uh, how masters is and how um, phd's are and uh, how research in uk and europe is a lot, the way everything functions there is a little different from um america and australia and stuff like that like you get all of these perspectives and all of this information when you meet people with both within and outside that student ecosphere and um i feel like so there are at least before the pandemic there were a lot of meetups and uh, there were a lot of uh, tech hubs like uh, i used to be involved with uh, free software movement karnataka fsmk where i met a lot of amazing people all technologists and um, all very enthusiastic and had the same kind of passion towards tech so i feel like the tech community um, in the place that i was in in bangalore was like really strong and very very helpful like mm-hmm. everything had its own club there's something called bang piper which is bangalore python persons so that's for python people and um, then there's the uh, pi ladies i'm sure you've heard of that and mm-hmm. so everything has its own community and it's just a matter mm-hmm. of putting yourself out there and uh, finding and meeting people yeah, so like how did you come to know about these clubs the, so the first one was uh, fsmk and um, they were the, my seniors were involved uh, with them so when i would meet my seniors and be like hey what are you doing this weekend and they'd be like oh i'm going over here or hey what are you doing for uh, this mm-hmm. on these days it's a holiday and they'd be like oh we're going and meeting up and uh, mm-hmm. there's an event and we're going to attend that why don't you join um, it's about this 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 and i'd be like oh really and uh, they're like yeah come meet people so then i would go i would meet people and then they all would turn out to be amazing and um, then i would just meet them a little more and they would be like hey i'm going to this other event and uh, mm-hmm. that's really good so um why, why don't we go there so that's how like kind of like a butterfly effect so it just like happened yeah. so but like even if you would meet people also like you can always go and meet up and uh, find groups yeah. it's just first first time that uh, really you need that push like mm-hmm. oh my god mm-hmm. should i or should i not but after that it, hoping that's a good experience if it is then you'll just like putting yourself out there and be like you know what either i can gain help from people or i can help people so that's the best part of the tech community do you believe that like you wanted to pursue your masters in the, in one of the best universities in the world and that pushed you to approach these people and like to spend your weekend so with these people like that kind of pushed you right? um, I feel like my masters was a part was like kind of like a side uh, prod, side product of my uh, passion but my passion is really to like trying to build good uh, good technology that uh, is accessible to more and more people mm-hmm. and uh, in the process of that I happened to meet these uh, FSMK folks and all the other groups and those people and um, so it just that's how it turned out and then somewhere mm-hmm. down the line i'm like okay i want to do my masters and then somewhere mm-hmm. down the line i'm like okay who mm-hmm. do i approach and ask for help and then i would ask my friends and they would point me out to like other people like take their help take their help and i would be like okay i'm going to ping them i'm going to ping them and then that's how it happened i think this is really kind of strange like what students do like 
okay i want to pursue masters in india then you don't have to work on these projects just work on your gate exam like get a good score get into iit that's true yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, i thought that you want, wanted to go to masters like in in us or like in uk so you you need to need to work on a project that's how you approach these clubs and like did this project but it was a project where yeah i mean that's the thing about india also right like i do i can't do that in india i i'm not i can't take it so i was very sure that that's not my uh, cup of tea so i was concentrating mm-hmm. on like my statement of purpose and i was concentrating on on um like find finding out what to do to um get into a good school for masters and then mm-hmm. how to uh, leverage that mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so did you take some help of linkedin Like in the application process or in project process. Take the help of LinkedIn. Actually, I did. I took a lot of help because uh, after I got into universities, I now needed to narrow down on one university, mm-hmm. and um, then I didn't know how to narrow down initially. I'm like, all of these are good universities. Now, how do I pick just one? Mm-hmm. Uh, what if it's the wrong one? And uh, then I started pinging people. I would find people on LinkedIn, and mm-hmm. uh, I would ping them, and I would be like, "Hey, I got into this university, mm-hmm. and uh, I wanted to know a little more about uh, your experience mm-hmm. over there, so that I can help. It it can help me finalize my um, decision mm-hmm. on whether or not I should join. Nobody obviously can tell you um, which university is better than the other, but they can only mm-hmm. talk about their experience at that university, and mm-hmm. that's all." it as well so i that's how i used linkedin and i pinged a lot of students i'm like can you tell me can you tell me about your experience thank you very much for i mean like it's, it's, they're taking the time out to do that so thank you very much for your time and your effort and um yeah a lot of yeah. linkedin yeah so they would give voice calls right or like you just ask them over the text messages sorry you ask them over the text messages about their experience or like you would like schedule like call them yeah i mean like uh, i get that like now that i'm doing my masters i get that it's very tough to find time to uh, do anything out of your uh, masters and so uh, i did understand that from my seniors as well so i knew that uh, people won't find time so i would just be like so these are my couple of doubts please take your time and answer whenever you want Uh, if you if you can answer like there's no harm in not answering i totally understand that it's very busy so that's okay and uh, some people would not be able to reply because they have like deadlines and all right but uh, some people would actually sit and reply some people would be like um, there are these students ambassadors and uh, you can go and contact them so in india i never had that uh, student ambassador um, experience at all like we never had that so after com- after hearing about student ambassadors that's when i found out that you can contact these people and ask them questions and mm-hmm. so um i would try to find student ambassadors of uh, universities and ping them like mm-hmm. these are my questions and yeah. can you help me out over here yeah so like uh, like i had i had same doubt like you like i don't have a lot of classmates who want to go to the university even though i mm-hmm. go to an ivy school so out of nowhere like this idea came into mind okay okay let's ask these people for the interview <laughs> so like i would also have some idea like what university to go to what not to go to and how things were like like then yeah so, like text messages did not work out for me so like i don't know why so i thought let's just do it and <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on uh, from person to person. Like right now, it's one one o'clock. We started this at one o'clock in the night for me, and uh, crazily, this is when I'm free. And uh, like twelve o'clock was my assignment submission, and it was so crazy. Like uh, I've been at it for the past six days continuously, and I, I'm just so happy I'm done with it. So that's the experience that everybody has over here. Like they're all bogged down by the assignments and uh, all the preparations for their interviews, and like that itself is a subject on its own. I feel like preparing for your interview and applying for jobs. Um, yeah. So. your whole time is taken up except like maybe your sunday you have some time to do laundry and some cleaning mm. and meeting your friends or something yeah. so so like like 
I have a lot of LinkedIn connection. I am sure you also have. It's not like that. Everyone is busy. Like some people have they have they taken time off. Okay, this week I will take time off. Okay, I mean the people who go to university, university, okay, like they are busy with their work. But like somebody who is on vacations or like out of the school, so I can or someone is doing their job. I think they have weekends off, right? So okay, this. <laughs> I can give time to see that, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's very important to have that experience of that uh, tech community and that the experience of community itself, where you know people help you and you help others. Mm -hmm. And only when you have that kind of a thinking, uh, you can help someone else. Like take time out of your uh, schedule and uh, help someone else. But I do also meet people who have not had that experience, mm -hmm. and so they can't relate to. Um, the whole community aspect of uh, helping mm. for the community not for mm. one person you know mm. so not everyone has that experience or so not everyone can think that way so i think like some of the students will say okay chidas i can give time to you but i will not i don't want to be recorded on youtube like okay i can give time to you and some would be like okay i can make give time for you in youtube right so like it depends <laughs> person to person like some people would give time to you maybe they I don't know why would they give you, right? Like they would pick out your time and like give out specially to you. And some people like happy to do it there into. I am fine with both, right? Yeah, I guess everybody has their own ways of going about everything. Yeah, they would be like, okay, I cannot help others, but I can help you. Like, I'm like, mm. thank you. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, at least for me also, I know how much uh, like. Mm you know speaking to other people and uh, even if it was text messages i know how much that uh, input helped a lot so mm -hmm. i'm like okay if someone wants it then i know that i am now i'm now in a position to help them out mm -hmm. so if i can yeah. then i thank you very much yeah no like, problem what financial aid does your school offer what are the requirements of need based aid and merit based aid what are the requirements of need based ad like they would you need based ad to like if someone is from poor back family background or like they would give some financial oh. aid to them uh so my university is not that great on uh, scholarships as such because mm -hmm. it's not uh, it's a public you know it's a private university it's not a public university so i would suggest that um for for people who want that um go for the public universities cuz they give out a lot of um, help for uh, students cuz they get funded by the state and uh, yeah that's about it private universities do not get funded e that easily so they don't shell out their money on anything at all not even like events as much as uh, public universities do Yeah, I thought it it was it was other way around. Like the MIT, Harvard, and like these universities, like they can offer full financial aid to the students. Like if you are admitted. Oh yeah, so that, yeah, the IVs are very expensive, mm -hmm. and uh, if they feel the need to uh, give a scholarship or help people out, they can because they also get that kind of input from uh, other students, mm -hmm. and they also get that kind of input from their um like. the people who give them donations and all you know who people who um, all the alumni uh, community and all of that so they also get that kind of input to be able to shell out but when you start looking at um, non iv universities mm -hmm. and uh, suppose you want the best of the non iv league universities mm -hmm. then um, and if you really want like a financial aid or financial assistance then um, Uh, I would suggest going for a public university over a private university. So, like, like what, like, how much you have to pay Northern Eastern University, like, for international students? Um, so, North Eastern uh, is pretty much sticks to that I twenty, which is uh, the whole um, the whole course costs about forty uh, thousand dollars. Okay, for two years. Yeah. Four thousand. Okay. And like other, like other universities, like these MITs, they would 
they would charge like seventy five thousand dollars for yeah, one year. Yeah, seventy five thousand and more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's a trade off. Like uh, some people can um, yeah. can afford that kind of a living, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, those people can definitely uh, have obviously earned their uh, right to be there with all of their hard work and uh, can easily go there financially also. But I feel like after you come here, there's not. too much of a difference between um the top 10 colleges and the top 20 or the top 10 and the top 30 like no, over here it's not seen as iit versus non iit it's not seen like that um as much as we do in india so um, university is not that important uh, when it really boils down to it i mean definitely if you get into an ivy league and if you can afford to go there um, then go for it but if you can't then there's no harm at all like nobody's mm. nobody judges you based on the university really yeah so like what are your school strengths my school strengths Mm-hmm. um i guess the co-op program that i mentioned is one of its biggest strengths and uh, the diversity of people like the boston campus has lots of indians and uh, mm-hmm. lots of like a lot of people in the university so you don't feel like um, you don't feel too far away from home really mm-hmm. and um the cultural aspect to it basically ultimately so that mm-hmm. that's really good um and they go out and about with their career fairs so mm-hmm. that's also really good mm-hmm. and uh, yeah i guess these would be the strengths and of course like they have really good professors who are mm-hmm. really helpful and um, help you meet more people and network and that's really really nice over here and i feel it's really helpful as well yeah so as you mentioned you are like, really busy in northern eastern but india i don't think there is that much work pressure like you have a lot of free time in india indian in, in indian university so how yeah. difficult yeah how difficult was it like to adjust yourself like did you face oh. that so the first month itself was very difficult honestly um because i had to really change my mind from like getting away wow. from just getting marks mm-hmm. to uh, really like getting the right output mm-hmm. so in india even if you don't get the right output like they'll give you partial marks and then you go and fight for more marks and you're going to be like no but i got this pa- i got this part right mm-hmm. oh here it's not like that they mm-hmm. they're just like okay walk us through your code justify mm-hmm. what you've done so mm-hmm. i was not used to that i was not used to explaining what i did and why i did it so that was very new to me and um, so that took some time to get adjusted to to stop thinking about marks constantly and uh, my grade over here rather and uh, so grade will come anyhow uh, as long as you really uh, know what you're doing and put your efforts into it so that's something that i took one month i think to get uh, used to and after that it's pretty much fine like you can't you don't have time to uh, adjust really it's just that one one that you have and then after that you're all set and uh, you just go and you get used to everything yeah so like do, do students face duck syndrome or in, in, in imposter syndrome in northern eastern i think any university anyone face like many people do face it but uh, actually northeastern has a workshop to get over it also um in one of their courses called uh, career prep career preparation um so we really address imposter syndrome and uh, talk about how to how to address it, how to even realize it and then how to address it and Uh, yeah so even like the non tech help is also like a lot mental health and um, is given a lot of importance and um, since everyone is coming you know home to this new place away from their home for like many of us is the first time that we're getting out of our houses also yeah. right so it's a very big shift and we indian families are pretty big and yeah. to suddenly leave all that and come to a place where you don't know people it's just yeah. suddenly have just to everything mm-hmm. start cooking which is mm-hmm. something i never used to do mm-hmm. and many of my friends mm-hmm. never used to do 
Mm-hmm. So you suddenly start doing all these new things. You start studying also with all of that. Mm-hmm. You need to be, to be your preps also with all of that. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm-hmm. so I think like the, the, these US school kids like have problem like they face in, imposter syndrome or duck syndrome when they go to college. I think I would suggest them to come to India for colleges and they would not have anything. <laughs> <laughs> even if they have they would be fine right there is lot of free time you can yeah. chill out with friends go out yeah yeah i feel yeah it's it's, it's not uh, given too much of an importance in india so we don't even realize it over there but over here they actually like have workshops to um, find yeah. out uh, yeah. what imposter syndrome is or what yeah. anything is and uh, whether whether or not you can connect to it and what to do if you can yeah. so that kind of help is like really good so jokes apart like it was a joke jokes apart like in india we have strong family background right even if you are dealing with some problem so they would help you to get over it so do you th- do you believe that if us students have that strong family background they would not face these syndromes like mental health issues as much they are facing it right now i don't think like it's a lot of not- the um, uh, the non indian students that face it it's everyone that face even indian students here face it um and i do feel that uh, i mean asia is known for uh, its strong family background like we're known to put our family first but for whatever reasons like i guess because of the movies that uh, that are shown to us and all the tv series that are shown to us i feel like all that is not true and even non asian people do really um, give a lot of importance to their family and uh, really connect with their family uh, during festivals and they're always there for their family they put family first just that it's not portrayed in all of the films and uh, all the movies and the series that we watch so we are not used to even think like that about anyone who is non indian but after you come here you realize that everyone is just the same like everyone puts their family first for the most part and um, everyone puts like even friends who are like family they put them first and so i feel yeah. like these don't really affect all of that yeah so like in us colleges they look for the holistic holistic approach like in that you should be good at everything you should be good at your extra curricular activities should be good you should set, set, like study all the subjects so like like last week i an interviewed a stud- oxford university student and mm-hmm. like she, she also studied in us so like she according to her like in uk they focus on one subject like students focus on one subject they are good at and like they read that subject in their life like in school they would read that subject and in bachelor's they would read that subject so they in the oxford university of oxford students don't face this imposter like duck syndrome or imposter syndrome because like they are they know what their subject is and they are like really good at it but in us colleges like everybody is from different background and like suppose you are taking physics classes and yeah like you were not that good in physics in high school so you would have tough time in college to understand that cause cause the formulas and like difficulties hard right so i feel like that happens to everyone like even i faced that even in india as well like i never i was never a fan of physics and uh, it was really difficult but i feel like um, the kind of people here who do their uh, who who make it to college are also the kind of people who have the passion to achieve what they want to achieve what they set out for so these are the kind of people who no matter what will get past whatever hurdles that they face um, however they get past it is up to them but uh, whatever the issue comes up there are ways to deal with it i mean there are a lot of channels of uh, communication that they can uh, approach for help and um, there's all the even the professors are really considerate and um, they're really helpful and if you if you want like extra resources university provides it like maybe you're uh, suddenly told to code in um, some particular fashion but you're not used to it and it's suddenly very overwhelming cuz uh, you also have other assignments to catch up with in other subjects and you're like oh my god what what am i going to do but there's always help like uh, as long as you know where and how to seek So did you take GRE exam? I did. Yeah. 
like how did you prepare for that i uh, i i remember uh, having that green color manhattan prep uh, gre book um it was about like i think 3 inches wide and 2 and 1/2 inches it really big book but it had like uh, it had quants and it had verbal and it had that uh, um essay thing also in the end and it had some practice papers and all mm-hmm. so i did that and uh, i did a couple of i did a bunch of uh, practice papers online mm-hmm. and um apart from that i uh, used magush's uh, gre cards yeah. online yeah. app yeah mm-hmm. used that mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so these are my resources for gre mm-hmm. yeah how long did it take take to prepare for you well, actually i didn't like gre at all so i <laughs> i maybe put in one month of uh, preparation for gre cuz yeah. i was just, just like one month. Month and i want to be done with this So what score what score did you get I got a 307 I forgot the break up but I definitely got more in quants than I did in uh, verbal and I think both of them had crossed 150 no I think this is this is a really good score 3 or 7 out of 360 right yeah I mean I wouldn't say really good but I would say that is good enough to um, mm-hmm. set foot into a university a good university here mm-hmm. about 300 anything about 300 is good yeah. yeah so if you could change one thing about your college what would it be one thing about my college not only college um what would i change i would just uh, well uh, this is more specific to the fact that it's a satellite campus and not a um not the main campus like the main campus has a lot of these cultural events that happen and the satellite campus does not so i feel like um, a lot of us don't get to mingle um like we would have if we were in the main campus and so um that's the that's probably the only thing i would uh, ask or change like uh more mixer events where uh, we can meet more people and get to know them like how stay not simple how northern eastern has helped you so far north eastern has uh, given me a lot of uh, resources in terms of um, my professors like the really amazing people and uh, through them i've met like more amazing people mm-hmm. and uh, so my network base is definitely built after coming over here purely because of northeastern mm-hmm. and um, also they have like these amazing um, you know like our english is not good right like compared to um, our mother tongues because we're not primarily english speaking people and uh, so they have like workshops to help with that and i feel like that really helped too and um like uh, yeah mainly i feel so. based and of course my practical thinking ability uh, like completely changed over here mm. just in the first semester i can tell that between the first month of first semester and the last month of my first semester like there was a major change and it was because of my professor then like i really took a lot of her help into like can you please tell me why my solution can be how my solution can be better cuz i'm i can't think of it anymore and then she would after my submission after the grades come out she would sit down with me and be like this is how it can be better this is why it can be better and then she would be like no why don't you come up with a similar solution so like all these kind of inputs really helped a lot so what is your what? contribution to the school my contribution is coming up <laughs> uh i have this uh, i i feel like networking is a very important uh, aspect uh, in any field and i feel like being asians like my university has mostly asians and i feel like we don't get that opportunity um wherever we are from asia and so i feel like we also don't have the confidence to randomly walk into a room and start talking to a bunch of unknown people mm-hmm. and even i didn't have that confidence and uh, then so i have a networking 101 workshop for um, tech that's coming up and uh, yeah that's yeah. that's probably yeah. the one of the ways that i'm giving back yeah right now so, like everybody is different so you don't have to be like talk to everyone like 
I mean, everybody nature is different. So I don't think, uh, yeah, Free all of the students. Yeah. All of the, yeah. So I think. You don't like, need to talk to everyone, but like when it's a specific networking event that you're going to, then everyone knows, like everyone's goal is to network at that venue. And okay, okay. Uh, when you go there and you blank out, you're like, okay, maybe, you know, the other person doesn't want to speak to me or uh, maybe I'm going to be speaking way too much or maybe I'm not going to sound right or maybe I'm not respecting that person enough. All of these like un- unnecessary thoughts start um, popping up in your head and you never end up speaking out loud. But all you really need to do is just go say hi. Mm-hmm. I'm Aishwarya. That's all. That's all can start a conversation. So um, to build that confidence up really takes um, a lot of effort from both ends, like the person who's mm-hmm. telling you and the person um, being told. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I if I can help at least one person, then I really want to. That's about it. Yeah. I think this is a nightmare for me. I cannot go and sit <laughs> to them. Like, I'm lucky enough to have mentors. Like, if I have problems with if I have problems, I would definitely reach out to people. Like, but if I have not any problem, I'm good. Then it is it is not easy. That is to reach out to people and like go and say hi to them. Yeah, no, <laughs> all it takes is a hi. Like, especially at a network event, you know yeah. that everyone's there to speak. You know yeah. that everyone's there to find out how they can help you or how you can help them. So just yeah. just say hi, and the other person will also say hi, and then you're gonna yeah. go like. So what are you doing here? So very simple things that can um, break the ice and start a conversation. You, it doesn't have to be something like, so tell me how you uh, give the solution to this kind of a problem or something like that. No, it's just a hi. Yeah. So I think I need to thank you for giving this advice. I think this would help me. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So I think I have just five or six questions for yeah. the interview. I, I, yeah, other than that, they were just based on like your experience or in India. So I would not take you a lot of time. Like you need oh, to okay. see. Yeah. So last two questions. Where do you see yourself in next 10 years and what is your ultimate goal in life? Um, I definitely see myself in the tech field mm-hmm. itself being mm-hmm. a software developer in the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. And uh, my, I wouldn't say my ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. But, well, some of my goals uh, professionally in life would be um, to climb up that typical uh, software development ladder and to become um, um, a product manager and then um, as a side hustle, maybe start like a coffee shop or something. Um, And yeah, that's about it. Nothing too fancy. Yeah. So like if you could, if you could give one advice to 11th grade review, 11th grader you, what would you give? I would tell the 11th grader me to stop worrying so much. Mm-hmm. And um, I would tell the 11th grader me to start uh, solving more uh, of those MCQ problems that mm-hmm. show up in all the entrance exams. Not that entrance exams means ev- everything, but like mm-hmm. looking back, I'm like, those were so simple. Like, why didn't I just mm-hmm. go ahead and solve it back then? Mm-hmm. Um but my problem, I guess, was more like I was too scared to even start. So mm-hmm. I would say, don't be scared. Just go ahead, do it, mm-hmm. um, and mm-hmm. and then see where it goes. Yeah. So do you sometimes think, okay, I should have worked hard in 11 and 12 and like get a good university oh. in the US itself? Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely that? don't think that. I'm very happy to have been to all of the institutes that I've been in and to be at every single place in my life that I've been in at the time that I went um, because that's what led me to be here right now and I feel like I'm really happy and content right now um, with whatever has been happening and uh, of course I'm not as content also I really do want uh, to find my ultimate job like my dream job and all of that but um, that's always going to be there but yeah I would definitely not say I wanted to work harder in 11th or something. I'm very happy and satisfied with what I did. Yeah, yeah. so that's very good thing, right? So just in case, like, you want, you are back in 11th grade, 11th grade, grade again. So do you want, okay, so if you have two choices, okay, go to an Indian university or, like, go to an U.S. university and, like, you want to work hard, work on the, on one thing. So who would, which one, when would you choose? 
um i honestly feel like uh, sorry this was the, the question was uh, would i work harder to go to a us university or uh, indian university or indian yeah. university right yeah. i would honestly uh, pick indian university itself because yeah. i feel like um whichever university it is yeah. ultimately the experience you gain out of it yeah. i mean technical yeah. aspect is one thing but yeah. you gain life experiences out of anywhere you go to yeah. uh, be it in the us or in india yeah. uh, you do gain experience of um, how to deal with like life yeah. problems and um, how to deal with yeah. financial stuff and yeah. all so i feel like anywhere you go any kind of university yeah. these problems will pop up and you learn yeah. how to solve them. so yeah so i so i think you would have same experience like the experience you would give the same experience from a us university or like indian university but if you want to work in tech field so i think you have more resources in us universities like if you can compare your previous universities like i don't want to say in any negative sense just to tell the real thing yeah just no, no, no. real thing a lot of resources in indian uh, universities not universities per se but in india also the mm-hmm. only difference being wherever it is you mm-hmm. need to step out of your college or sometimes if you're lucky then within your college itself you have all the resources but resources are always available around and uh, it's all wherever we are in life i feel it's up to us to reach out to these resources like even if you have the opportunities in in your university there's no 100% chance that um, you're definitely going to go for that opportunity right only i mean opportunities are there you need to go and find them and make use of them so yeah. so as you mentioned like you were like you had a free time there in bangalore like in bangalore that university but as here like they make you work hard and like they ask you problems like how did you do it so i think you gain more knowledge like maybe you are more productive you in here like in us so like just if you are working hard and like to get in admission into indian university mm-hmm. so more at most you would get an iit and like getting an iit is not that easy as, as you know like like there are there are lakhs of students i, I don't know 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs applying there and it's really competitive and um, and if you do that work hard to apply in us universities i think you would get a good university good university in us yeah yeah, yeah. you would yeah. no doubt get a good university in the us mm. but ultimately it boils down to i mean yeah it's not easy to get into the iits mm. but uh, see all the top positions and the top people in these top positions not everyone is from the iits and nits um everyone who are there are people who have mm. known how to reach out to the right person at the right time to be at that place so it's really important to meet mm. people to gain to learn about mm. their experience mm. and uh, to apply to try try to um, mm. learn from that and uh, see what works for you mm. and wherever you are you have to mm. get out of your comfort zone you have mm. to do stuff that you didn't think you would need to do and uh, being in the uni- us university enables you a lot more opportunities mm-hmm. but it that doesn't mean that india does not have those opportunities there are many many internships available there are many mm-hmm. um, online everything is virtual now anyways mm-hmm. and um, like yeah. even go to people in india who work at amazon who work at google meet mm-hmm. them speak to them uh, gain perspective from them maybe ask them for referrals also like later on in life mm-hmm. like just i i don't want to be them in any industry i was just wanted to know like you would have more so more opportunities there like just in terms you are comparing just, like not to go emotional okay i am not defaming in any industry just to compare side by side just we are comparing side by side like which opportunity which have better professors which have more resources at the at the universities at the university like which have better labs i'm just comparing side by side like not to defame any new indian universities or like any us universities so just like comparing them side by side like you have to compare like as compare, you compared yeah. yeah as you compared so, like you got into lot of Indi- uh, U- us universities and at the end of the day you had to compare and choose one so just com- if you have choices and like if you are comparing side by side so which one would you choose like which one would you do work hard for like if you have both options available like that was my question so um, you have to reach out to people 
no matter in india or in us but if you are at university so which university or like indian university or us university which one will give you better resources so that's what i'm saying if i were to go to a us us university then maybe i would uh, look into going to a us us university but then i would i still feel i would prefer staying in india itself uh, purely because of the age bracket also like i can't imagine the 18 year old me having to go out and cook so it's a lot of uh, changes in your life that you need to get used to as well along with your studies so um if i were a person who wouldn't mind all that uh, who wouldn't mind any of that and would uh, get out at, as an 18 year old and get adjusted to anything come what may then i would go to a us us university but um, not then um, i would wholeheartedly settle for an indian university and make the best out of it and uh, mm-hmm. promise myself to work for my masters yeah so like yeah, right now like you studied in india so so like you have emotional attachment with that but if you look purely in terms of statics and like it's not in terms of like, emotional attachment it's because i've met people over here who have done their undergrad over here right mm-hmm. so i can compare um, no doubt the way of teaching is different the way of learning is different in both the places but ultimately the knowledge that is gained in both the kind of institutions are pretty much uh, on par with each other now the way you apply it is no doubt going to be different wherever uh, you're going to be and uh, so the stuff that